Thank you, Dave, and welcome to NET Day 2. Welcome back if you were with us yesterday. I'm sure you got a lot of great stuff. Yesterday, today is going to be amazing as well. So I'm sure I'm glad you're here. We're all glad you're here. I'm sure you'll be glad you're here once you've been through today as well. So one quick reminder, and then we're going to get right to it. That is, if you have any questions as we move today, go ahead and open the Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom menu and, uh, and throw the question in there. If we can get to it live, we will. And if we can't get to it live, we'll either get to it by responding to it in the Q and A, or post event will get you that information um, to your to your question. Sorry, I don't know why I'm stumbling. Welcome to Net. Okay, here we go. We are going to start with Josh Muller today. And if you don't know Josh, well, I'm going to give you some background here. Here's what's really exciting. When Josh was a brand new rep, he was super nervous. His first appointment, he followed the manual, did everything he was supposed to do that he was taught from his manager. But the person he was seeing was just constantly like, I'm not going to buy anything. I'm not going to buy anything. Can't afford to buy anything. I'm not going to buy anything. She said it over and over again. I'm not going to buy anything. He's like, no problem. He just kept dropping down, dropping down, dropping down. He finally dropped down to three knives. Buy three knives, get a turning fork free. Her question was, can I do it on payments? Yes, you can. And then she bought it. So he did make a sale. His first, his very first appointment ever and had a chance to drop down through all that stuff. From there at 50K, he joined the events team. He mainly joined the team because he wanted to help grow the Cuckoo organization. He had moved to a new area, so he wanted to develop a new list of customers in a new area, and because he just loves working the event program. From 50K on the events team, of course, doing many other things, he is currently at $7.6 million in personal sales. Josh is number three in the all-time standings of people who have ever worked with Cutco of career sales. You're going to be hearing from number two a little bit later, by the way, so a little promotion there. But Josh currently number three in his 2021 highlights. By the way, I will say too, if you were to ask him what's the most important thing he thinks to getting from where you are now to where you want to be, he would tell you that for his career, at least in many that he's talked to, it is mentoring or coaching or learning from people who are already getting those results. That's how he did it. And that's how he helps other people do it. So 2021 highlights, he sold $905,000 last year. He consistently averaged 10K per day at the booth. He consistently maintained a 95% plus closing percentage with new customers at the booth. He helped lead the TGP events team to breaking the all-time record for single event sales with over 1.3 million sold in 24 days at State Fair of Texas. They also sold 2.1 million in 46 days for all three of the state fairs, Oklahoma, Tulsa, Texas. He is super proud of having had the opportunity now to have worked at a national level in event development. He, one of the things he's most, um, you know, most proud of himself, of himself doing is just having that impact and being able to see some of those divisions grow and evolve from where they started to where they are now and being some of the fastest growing and most stable divisions in the company, which is really exciting. He just really loves to give back. Through events, he feels like he has developed very strong communication skills, closing skills, leadership skills, and effect, an effective conflict resolution. So if you feel like those are skills that you still want to develop in yourself, just know that working events will help you get there. It helped him get there. He was chosen to speak today because he's very confident and comfortable in talking with customers about the Cutco Kitchen. He's really good at painting the vision in what it is, the, the value of owning the kitchen. He's good at doing that quickly. He's good at helping people who already own Cutco build up to a kitchen. He's also really good at, if that isn't where they can do that today, really good at then dropping back down to something that's gonna make sense. So he can really move in any direction around the kitchen and do it effectively and do it confidently. So that's what he's gonna speak with you about today. On a personal note, he loves snow skiing. He's great at it, double blacks, all that. He was on the ski team in high school. He loves watching movies, he loves eating. Many people know him as having a hollow leg. People that know him well would tell you that he is hardworking, that he's trusting, that he's a great trainer and coach, and that he's humble. Josh would tell you that those are four very sexy attributes, by the way, that feeds into that humility that he's got. Also, he loves to travel. He loves epic, epic food experiences. He loves hosting family and friends, and he loves hanging out with his wife. Good thing you mentioned that one. And I would say when I asked what movie he would have loved to be a part of, he's like, really any movie. I would have just run the food table for the crew to hang out with anything. But I will tell you from my personal knowledge, he loves Princess Bride. He loves Tommy Boy. He loves Pulp Fiction. And he loves Tombstone. He is your Huckleberry. He is my favorite person. He is Josh Muller. Take it away. That's awesome. Thank you, Amy. <clears throat> All right, cool. Can everybody hear me okay? Can I get a thumbs up if you can hear me? Sweet. All right. Well, I am very excited to be connecting with everybody today on the topic of Cutco Kitchens. 
Are y'all ready to talk about selling bigger packages more frequently? Um, I mean, that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today. I want to say thank you, first of all, to all the people that I've learned from over the years. So many people um, that I've learned from over the years. Uh, and many thanks to everybody who spoke yesterday at the net meeting and everybody who's going to speak here coming up today at the net meeting. So um, I just really appreciated Brandon Brown's message. Got a lot from that. Uh, multiple pages of notes, got multiple pages of notes from listening to Kareem. Um, love hanging out with Bert. I actually had the pleasure of being able to work with Bert this past fall. So much of what he taught yesterday in his new customer approach, I've actually already learned and been able to implement in my own new customer approach. And Bert Wick, Seth Kinzer, those are two guys who are really um, two people I'd have to credit for a lot of the growth and success that I've had over the last few years with my personal average order, my level of set sales, um, I think I tripled the number of ultimates that I sold just last year at the booth. And I don't even really work that many days at the booth as, you know, in comparison to many of, you know, the people out there who are speaking here at the net meeting and, and people who are teaching on a national level right now. And so um, I've spent the last few years really studying the best in the business um, and to learn a lot about what it is that they're doing um, to sell bigger orders at a higher level. You know, when you've got people who are selling 100 ultimates a year um, and you're only selling 10% of that, I hope you're paying attention to that and noticing that and deciding like that's probably a skill set that I should work on developing. My philosophy has always been find the master, follow the model. I don't need to reinvent the wheel. I don't need to, you know, figure out the brand new path and, and blaze new trails all the time. Um, I just need to learn like what are the best of the best doing? Who's getting the results that I want? Like where are my areas for growth? Who's getting the results that I want in that area? And then how can I go learn from that person? And then learn it deeply, study it deeply, implement it deeply and then you know get it working well enough for me that I can then you know personalize it and make it my own so that I've got complete authenticity complete congruence um, in 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 what I'm saying what I'm doing how I'm doing it and uh, and I, I believe that when we're operating at that level um, that's where we really are able to shine through at our highest level and be our best selves especially in the booth environment where things are so fast-paced where there's so many distractions around us and where you know customers you know, in a matter of minutes are making a decision on whether or not they trust you enough to give you hundreds or for, you know, many of the people here, um, ultimately what you want thousands of dollars or thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in just a matter of minutes, like literally five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes sometimes. And I have the pleasure of being able to um, and the honor of being able to work with some of the best teams in the nation. I mean, the TGP events team, shout out to all my TGP homies. They're actually out in the other room right now because we're all having a watch party here in TGP and also the Lone Star Division. Um, I get to work in both divisions on a regular basis and both divisions make me feel like I'm at home and um, I really have the pleasure and honor of being able to say that I'm part of a, of a family of high performers and amazing people, people I've seen grow into who they are today, people I've seen, you know, struggle and, and, and feel challenged and really have a hard time in the beginning, but then get to where they are today. And, you know, I mean, I was talking with Calvin Lopez yesterday, who is literally beating his spring, his best spring ever in the first six weeks of the year and uh, told me that, you know, he's sold over $80,000 just in the month of January alone. And he's not working any different schedule than what he normally works. He's just worked so hard on developing his own personal skill sets to a level where he can work the same number of days, take the same number of shots he's used to taking at the events that he's working, but get literally four five, six X the results. So, um, and here's what I believe. If you're a person like Calvin or myself or many other people in this business, and you can come from where you came from before you started selling Cutco and get to like, if we can get, if we can come from where we started before selling Cutco and get to where we are today, anything is possible for anybody that's here today. So I just want to start by saying, no matter who you are, no matter what you're experiencing so far, whether you've been in this business for decades and you're a hall of fame member and you're looking to take things to the next level, or you're newer in the business, like you just started in the last six or 12 or 18 or 24 months while we're all going through this crazy time of COVID and all that sort of stuff. Um, just remember that where you are today or what experiences you've had in the past don't have to dictate where you go in the future or what level you can 
get to. If you surround yourself with the best of the best, if you learn best practices, if you find the masters already getting the results that you want and you follow the models that they're sharing with you, um, you can accomplish anything in this business because, and I believe that not just because of my own experience, but because I've literally seen hundreds and hundreds of people come through over the last 20 years of selling Cutco and, you know, come from where they started and get to, you know, championship performance levels. And uh, it's been really fun and exciting to see. Not all of us are Seth Kinzers. We can't start out great, right? So, and uh, Seth will love that I said that because uh, he loves to joke around about that. But, uh, but anyways, let's talk about Cutco Kitchen. So here's my belief. Kitchens are the future. In fact, for many of the top performing reps in the company, like Kareem El Tawanzi, Brandon Brown, myself, Curtis Jake Hughes, and so many others, kitchens are like so many other top performing reps in the company. Kitchens are actually the package of the present, like right here, right now. Kitchens are already being sold on a regular basis. And let's talk about what a Cutco kitchen is very briefly, because a lot of people believe that a Cutco kitchen is literally only an ultimate set with a full set of flatware, a full complete legacy cookware set, and then maybe some accessories and gadgets to go with it, or the full complete accessory package. And, you know, I, I just, I know that for me, when I opened my mind to kitchens being about more than just like the biggest of the biggest of all of the things and allowed it to be any combination of a knife set, flatware set, cookware set, and could also include any combination of accessories, gadgets, and serving tools. Um, that is where I started selling a lot more kitchens on the spot. That's where I also started building into and upgrading people to a lot more kitchens um, a lot faster and on a lot more regular basis. So to me, a homemaker bundled with a flatware chest, an aspiring cookware set, and a few gadgets qualifies as a kitchen, at least to me. Um, and, you know, as long as the customer, we're helping them get some combination of all four of the main kitchen packages all at once and that's a kitchen and whether that is something that i sell all in one package or that's something that i build up in four different orders over the course of the next 24 months or the next you know 48 months or the next you know five or ten years ultimately when we hit that spot where they've got knives they've got they've got the ideal knife set for them they've got the ideal cookware set for them they've got the ideal flatware set for them and they've got the ideal accessory package for them then they own a cutco kitchen and you know it could be an ultimate set a double flatware chest a legacy cookware set and a complete accessory package that also qualifies as a cutco kitchen it could be you know a signature set with a few gadgets accessories i think you all get the point here so um so, you know, let's also understand that there's a few different ways to sell Cutco Kitchens. I found that they come about in about five different ways most commonly. So if you're going to write some stuff down, this is where you probably want to start taking some notes. So number one, you can sell a kitchen all at once, right? It doesn't happen as often as the other types of orders that I get, like bundle packages or knife sets or, you know, multi-set orders on family program, like Brian talked about so eloquently yesterday. Thank you, Brian Carter. I love that message. I sell way more uh, multiples than I ever did before after listening to Brian and working next to Brian and literally seeing him implement what he teach, what he taught us all yesterday. Um, you know, I've, I've sold more multiples because of that just osmosis that I get from Brian um, and also just listening and learning from Brian. Uh, and implementing what he's teaching. So, but you can sell them all at once, right? Second way that you can sell them is you can sell them bundled through upserving. So sometimes you present a kitchen to someone and they're interested in it. Matt Graves can tell you this from personal experience. So can Brandon Brown, but you, you, you literally present it and they're into it. They're like, uh, well, okay, cool. What if I did the whole thing? Like, you know, when you close and you follow the right process, they're, they're actually interested in it. It's not as common, but it does happen when you are consistent with, close it showing and closing on bigger packages like Kareem talked about yesterday. But also sometimes, you know, it becomes very clear after you show it and present it as an initial offer, it, it very easily becomes clear in most cases that that's not the right thing for them to wrap their mind around and make their initial purchasing decision on. So, you know, oftentimes you got to drop down to knives because that's what they came up for. Or that's the priority or, or, you know, you got to go to that upgrade and get that closed first because they're a Cutco owner and they're sold on Cutco, but they're not wrapping their head around a $10,000 order at the moment. That's not what they came up for. They came up to buy two or three knives, right? And so 
it takes sometimes getting the first most important package closed and, and meeting the customer where they're at, handling kind of their concerns and their hesitations and things like that and really getting curious like Brandon teaches and, and, and really getting down to the root of like what it is that's on their mind right now to help them make that initial decision. Like Brian said yesterday, the biggest gap is between meeting the customer and getting them to make a purchasing decision. But then the, the easier gap to clear multiple times over and over again, a lot of cases is actually through the upserving process. And so many times the kitchens that I sell actually come through a, you know, as a bundled package that's built up through upserving by starting on a knife set, adding on something like a flatware or cookware package or some accessories, adding on the next package after that, adding on the next package after that. You've heard me share before that it's so important to show every package to every client every time. Now, is that a, possible to accomplish 100% of the time with 100% of clients? No, because we end up at busy shows. There's different things come up, different things happen. So it's okay if that's not possible to achieve all the time. But if that's what you're focused on, you're consistent about it, you will get through all the packages with all customers more often than not, which means that you will also more often than not close more bundle deals and close more kitchens, right? The third way to sell them is on multiple orders over 10 or 15 payments. Now, I'm not going to get into how to write up 10 pays and sell 15 pays and things like that. But if you have a good system in place and you've got as something as simple as a manila folder, right? You can have a system that helps you keep track of um, when people place a 10 or 15 pay order. If you want more information on that, go listen to a Conversations with Champions audio that I did with Kareem a few years ago, where he literally walks us through his 10 and 15 pay programs and talks about how to sell bigger orders on extended payment plans um, by just putting together a two or three or four order series of orders over the course of time. Um, and you know, then you can get those bigger deals. You can bundle some incentives into those deals for the customer to want to bundle those packages together that they know they're eventually going to get anyways. And instead of doing it over the next four or five or 10 years. Instead, you get it all done all at once and it's just happening over the next five, 10, 15, 20 months or so. The fourth way that we can sell kitchens is built or upgraded over time. You know, there's a lot of customers who they know what they want. They're comfortable committing to something today, but they're not comfortable committing to a 10 or 15 pay. They're not comfortable to buying it all at once. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. We have to be good at tuning in to clients when they're at, when they're in that situation and letting them know that it's okay for them to buy it over time. Ultimately, my goal, and I share this with customers, hey, Mr. Jones, listen, my goal is just to help you understand what all we have. And most of our customers are building up what we call, or working on you know, building what, they, what we refer to as their ideal Cutco kitchen package. So based on the cooking that you do, and once you have your full complete Cutco kitchen, you will literally never have to buy any of this stuff again. Many of our clients buy it all at once because when you do it all at once, it's always where you get the best deal because the more you get, the more you save, right? Um, but also some of our clients, they build it up over time. And so my goal is just to figure out what it is that's best for you and what's the best plan that we can put in place for how you want to get there. And customers are like, oh, okay, that sounds really good. And immediately it shows them that you're on their side, you care about their best interests. And ultimately your goal here is just to consult them by giving them education or information on all of their options. And then you know, strategically leading a conversation that helps them determine for themselves what the best process to making this happen would look like. So, and so many of the kitchens I've sold over the years, which I've sold a ton. It's funny, I didn't realize how many kitchens I've sold over the years until I started doing service events five years ago. Thank you, Luke Mills, for building and creating that program. That was incredible and a game changer for so many of us, right? But it wasn't until I started consistently doing service events and I had people literally bringing in their whole cuckoo collection. I'm like, oh, wow, they've already got a kitchen. They've already got a kitchen. They were, I didn't realize over time I've sold all of these ultimates. That built my confidence in selling ultimates up front to people because I realized like I've had so many customers over the years that started with something small, upgraded to a homemaker, upgraded to an ultimate, whatever. Eventually they all end up with ultimates anyways. So why not just help them save the most by getting it now versus spending more by doing it over time, right? So they're gonna eventually get it anyways. Save more now versus spend more later just makes sense. Um, so built or upgraded over time, when you do a good job with your CRM, tracking wish lists, 
tracking a future order pipeline um, and taking good notes on your clients and what they're interested in and what they're not interested in, boy, you can leverage your tools to your advantage down the road when you're putting strategic promotions out for the holidays, when you're you know, driving traffic to your booth um, you know, with your past customers and things like that. And so I literally have customers over the last four years who've come to the fair or the home and garden show or one of the events that I work every single year with intentions to purchase the next package in their Cutco kitchen, in their ideal Cutco kitchen experience. And then the fifth way that you can sell Cutco kitchens, and I think a lot of people underrate this one or don't even think about this one or haven't even considered this one ever in their life is built as gifts for others. So for me, one of my money lines, one of my key phrases is I say to people, you know, when they complete their Cutco kitchen, I say, oh my gosh, Sally, congratulations. You completed your Cutco kitchen. High five. I'm so excited for you. You now have your ideal Cutco kitchen. And I love that perfect question that Brian gave us yesterday, which is, hey, uh, Sally, I'm just curious, in an ideal world, how many different Cutco kitchens would you see yourself eventually wanting to have? And it's funny how people, they look at you kind of weird when you ask that question, like, kind of like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, I have a lot of customers who, you know, once they have Cutco in their home kitchen, where they cook the most, that's when they start looking at, you know, Cutco kitchens for their RV or their boat or their cabin or their lake house or, you know, or even, you know, many of my clients actually, once they have everything they want for themselves, that's when they start looking at Cutco as gifts for their family and friends. Because you spend the money on gifts anyways, you might as well spend it on something that we know they're going to use every single day for generations, right? Customers are always like, hmm, that's a good idea, right? And then you can go into that family program gifting conversation that Brian talked about. So those are the five ways I've found that you can really sell kitchens. Now, there's a few rules that you always want to follow no matter what. So like number one, always talk about the kitchen as a concept. So what do I mean by that? Well, when you think about that concept as of a kitchen, it's the ideal customer experience. I mean, think about it, right? People who have pieces of Cutco like Cutco. People who have sets of Cutco love Cutco. People who have kitchens of Cutco are raving fans. Like to the point where, I, I mean, think about this. Those of you that are veterans, you can attest, right? Think about those customers that have shown up at the booth and they have been like, oh my gosh, like I have that whole set right there. Not just, and I have the cookware and I also have the silverware uh, and I have the ice cream scoop. Do you have the ice cream scoop? Oh my gosh, the ice cream scoop is amazing. You got to have the ice cream scoop. It's, it's incredible, right? And they're just like, they are literally like, when my customers who own kitchens walk up, and I'm working with another customer and I'm like, oh, hey, Sally, how are you? They're like, Josh, what's up? I'm like, hey, it's great to see you. Let's get you in the drawing. Hey, by the way, Sally, how long have you had your Cutco? Oh my gosh, I've had Cutco for, and then they go into their, they go into their story and I literally will just step back and smile. And, and like, I'll have customers that'll just look at me and be like, is this for, I'm like, literally, they've been a customer of mine for many years. They have the full complete kitchen. And this is what it's like. Like, imagine feeling this way about your kitchen stuff. And they're just like, wow, yeah, okay. I'd really love to feel that way. So it's the ideal customer experience. So you have to get confident presenting it as the thing that most of our clients want and eventually end up with. I mean, think about it. Everybody has a hodgepodge of pots and pans. Everybody has, you know, the mix match silverware set. Everybody has the drawer full of spatulas and spoons and four ice cream scoops and five can openers and eight vegetable peelers and blah, 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 blah. Every, I mean, how many customers have you been in their home and they have like a galley set on the counter, but they also have two or three other blocks of crappy knives sitting next to them, next to their Cutco. I'm like, why haven't you gotten rid of those knives yet, right? If you don't believe in the Cutco kitchen yet, then the next time you're in someone's home for a demo or a service call, just do me a favor, do yourself a favor. Just say, hey, ma'am, um, really quick, as your kitchen consultant, can I just take a quick moment to just kind of review what your kitchen looks like? And they're like, yeah, sure, that'd be great, right? And then this is where you take kind of an awkward situation. You make it not awkward by positioning or framing it as, I'm a professional, as your consultant, I need to look at your kitchen. And then go open their drawers and look at what's in them and just leave them open. And then say, okay, where do you have your pots and pans stored? And then go open the cupboards and look at the cupboards. And then, okay, where do you keep your knives? And then go uncover all the knives. 
look at the flatware and then be like, hey, do you have that catch-all drawer with like the spatulas and spoons in it? They'll be like, <laughs> do I have a catch-all drawer? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I got five of them. Here, let, let, check it out, right? And it's so funny how people are like so proud to show you their crazy, ridiculously filled kitchens full of crap, right? And when you do that, look at all those open drawers and cupboards. Close your eyes for a second and just imagine if they were filled with Cutco. Not only would you be excited, of course, right? Because you sell the stuff. But how do you think your customers would feel? Right? This stuff just makes sense. By the way, do that in the next 10 or 15 homes that you go into. And I bet you, unless they already have a Cutco kitchen, that 15 out of 15 of those homes, I mean, unless you're just going into fancy homes all the time where they've already got all clad or salad master cooker, they've already got Wusthof or Shun knives, or they've already got, you know, the most expensive flatware. I mean, everybody's got the catch-all drawer full of cheap crap for the accessories, but, but like do that. I guarantee you 14 out of 15 times, nine out of 10 times, you're going to be like, wow, these people would really love it if they had a full complete kitchen and you will be sold on the idea that the kitchen is the ideal customer experience. So second rule that you always wanna follow, number two, always be planting seeds throughout your conversation with the customer. What does that mean? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I got news for you. Cutco is not a knife company, okay? And I know all my TGP homies are sitting down in the, in the room right now, they're like, yeah, yeah, that's true, we're not a knife company. Some of you might be going, but what are you talking about, Josh? That's what I was trained on. You know, I just like, I mean, that's, that's all I've ever sold is knives. Maybe a little bit of cookware here and there, or a couple of accessories here and there, but knives are the thing. Yeah, but we're not a knife company, guys. We, we are a premier kitchen company. And not just a kitchen company. We are a premier kitchen company. We are a world-class product backed by a best-in-class guarantee, literally the best in the industry. Nobody competes. The knives aren't the only thing made in the United States. Our knives, our cookware, our flatware, and most of our other products are all American made, right? The knives aren't the only thing with the forever guarantee. Everything we make, including our knives, our cookware, our flatware, and all our accessories, all have the famous forever guarantee. I remember when Matt Graves first taught at the net meeting a few years back, and it was the first time I'd ever heard it. I was like, oh my gosh, why have I not been doing this? Like I'm talking about kitchens, but I'm not saying that. And it was literally just making sure that when you present the guarantee, you're like, yeah, so, you know, everything's guaranteed forever. Here's what forever means. Here's what happens with the guarantee. And by the way, this guarantee is not just on our knives. It's on all of our products, including our flatware, our cookware, and all of our gadgets and accessory items. Right, just that one little statement, what it does is it's reminding the customer multiple times throughout your approach that we make more than just knives. Even though the knives may be kind of the anchor product or the thing we're famous for, we still have all these other products and all these other products are just as good, if not better, than the knives. So number three rule, always share how much of their Cutco kitchen they have now, no matter what they buy. Once they've completed their ideal set of knives, guess what? They're 25% of the way to their personal Cutco kitchen. Once they've added on that flatware package to the knife set, hey, you know what? Congratulations, Brandon, you're 50% of the way to your ideal personal, your personal Cutco kitchen. Once they add on that cookware set, boom, they're 75% of the way. Once they're 100% done, they've added on that complete accessory package. They have the flatware, they have the knives they want, they have the cookware that they'll use. Bam, they have now completed their personal Cutco kitchen. And by the way, that is worth celebrating. Celebrate that with your clients. And don't let that be the end. Let that be just the beginning. Because if you can open their mind to multiples, if you can open their mind to family programs, if you can open their mind to sharing the gift of Cutco in their business and with their family and friends, you open up the long-term lifetime value of a client to where basically the sky's the limit, right? I literally have customers now where after completing their own Cutco kitchen, we are now in the process of completing the Cutco kitchen for all their employees or for all of their kids or for all the grandkids or for all the nieces and nephews or for all the brothers and sisters. Like you never know where it's going to go. And so, 
you have to show it to everyone. You have to talk about it as an option for everyone in order to find who the people are that will even be open to the concept or considering the concept. And people that work with me consistently in the booth, they'll tell you like that they've seen me over the years get shot down by the same customer on cookware or flatware or gifts or business gifts or whatever year after year for these customers. And then because I'm disciplined in every package, every client, every time, what ends up happening is eventually they come up the same people that shoot me down on this one package or this program or whatever. And then all of a sudden they're like, Hey, you know what? We need to talk about this. In fact, my first business gift of the order this year was a $6,000 order or almost, I think it was 5,900 CPO. And it was a guy who's one of my gold clients. They bought five ultimates, one for themselves, one for each of their four kids. They've bought eight flatware chests, three for themselves, four for gifts to their kids, one for someone else. They've also bought cookware and they've done a little bit of business gifting here and there. And they have all the accessories because I basically sent them to them as gifts, just as a way of saying thanks for being an awesome client over the years. And um, every year, I know they own a big company. I know, I know that they, you know, that they really are successful. I know that they give business gifts because they've had this one program in place for 30 years and they love it. And I always bring up business gifts every time we talk about it. And I always have gotten shot down for over 10 years now, usually one, two or three times a year when we talk always getting shot down, always getting shot. Down. Well, guess what? They reached out to me, right? Like, I, like day before my birthday, best birthday gift ever and said, Hey, Josh, uh, we want to grab a call and talk about some quarterly gift ideas for our employees. When can we chat? And I was like, Oh my gosh. And I got on the phone with them and found out they just had a bad experience with the company that they've been doing gifts with for 30 years. It's like, they've been giving them all this business for 30 years. And the first time that they stepped up and asked for service because they needed it, the company dropped the ball. In like the worst of ways. And they were like, hmm, who's the only other person we know that's been talking to us about gifts? Josh, we should probably give him a call. They gave me a call and I was very, it was very easy for me to position Cutco as like, hey, that's great. You've been doing that for years. I'm sorry you had that experience, but here's why Cutco will never put you in that position for the rest of your career. And they were like, great, cool. Let's do it. Boom. 6K order. We've got plans for another you know, six to $20,000 between now and the end of the year. So make sure you're always building the vision for your people and also letting them know where they're at in that process. And also talking about all of our programs that are family gifting program, business gifting program and stuff like that. And the sky becomes a limit. Fourth rule, final rule I'll share with you. Always use the proper tools to aid you in the process. So what do I mean by that? Life is better through brochures. Brian talked about it. So the Cutco Kitchen brochure, this is a go-to tool for me. It should be right there on your front table. You should learn how to master using this. The Sets for Life brochure, Bert talked about this yesterday. It's a go-to tool for me. It's right on my front table. The upgrade brochure that, Cut that Curtis is gonna be teaching us on later. Boom, world-class tool, great tool, best tool we've come out with in the last 12 months. Why? Because it's the only tool we've come out in the last 12 months. Thank you, Dave Bush, was literally at this meeting last year and heard people say, it'd be really great if we had this tool. And then bam, we've got the tool, the family program brochure. It's right there on the table. I forgot to grab it, but it's gotta be in front of you. You gotta have it all the time, right? Have a Cutco Kitchen backdrop set up in the back of the booth. Have a Cutco Kitchen on display with the product. Do you have an ultimate set with steak knives? Do you have a full complete flatware chest? Not a flatware chest with 12 table knives and a couple settings of flatware. Have you invested the money into having a full complete flatware chest and the tools that you need to store it properly so it doesn't get scratched up after your first three shows, right? I've had my same flatware chest for four years now, almost five, and I, it doesn't show, it has like literally is just now starting to show a little bit of scratching. Have you invested in a complete legacy set of Cutco, of Cutco cookware yet? And do you have the full complete accessory package so you can set it out if and when you have the space to do that? right? Have the Cutco Kitchen brochure. Have the Cutco Kitchen special sheet. Like when I price position Cutco, this is the special sheet that uh, Kareem mentioned yesterday. This is it right here. So I've got on my iPad today. I also have this printed off and I have it like in, in a, you know, a protector sleeve and it sits there right with my brochures, right on top of my brochures. Cause I don't care if people see that our Cutco Kitchen is $13,000 almost retail. That's fine with me for them to see that. I want them to know that we sell high-end products. I want them to know that our stuff is expensive. Don't be afraid of people seeing that Cutco is a premium priced product. 
Why do we see so many Louis Vuittons walking around nowadays? So many coach purses. Why do we see so many people with thousand dollar iPhones that they upgrade every 12 months? Why do we see people driving around nice cars? It's because people like the world to know that they like nice things. So don't hide behind the fact that Cutco is nice. Right? Some of the most proud people you'll see are the people driving the nicest cars, living in the biggest houses and stuff like that. So, you know, let people know that, let people see that, present yourself as a premium product, a premium representative representing something premium. So let's talk about some key phrasing next. Um, so number one, watch the video on Vector Connect and use the handout that Kareem shared with us last year at the national CSP event. I'm a big believer if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? So I'm not gonna teach you the script and the step-by-step. -step. Kareem gave us a one-page document that's bulleted out last year. He gave us all the things to say throughout the normal demo that you learned in you know, events training. Add those things in and you will be showing and selling Cutco Kitchens more often, right? So use that because Kareem sells more kitchens than anyone I know personally. So we'll be sure that that handout is shared with everyone following this event because I have it linked on my Google Drive. So I'll send that to Dave and Amy and they'll get it distributed out to everybody that's here for the net meeting. But just make sure you're watching that, learning that and implementing what Kareem teaches because that's basically just what I do. So also be sure to talk about the kitchen early and talk about it often. It's something I talk about right at the beginning. And then I seed plan it throughout the demo. And then I price position and offer the option to the client to close on, right? So you talk about it at the beginning, you talk about it throughout the demo through seed planting, and then you price position with the Cutco Kitchen. And if they seem like they could be interested in it, which is easy to learn by just asking, then you close on that option. If not, you pivot to something different and then upserve into that option if they'll let you. So um, here's kind of my opening line that I share with people. Hey, you know, Mr. Jones, so just so you know, before we get started, we, we're famous for the knives because a lot of customers start there. But then what happens is people realize we make all the products you're used to replacing over and over and over again in your kitchen. And once you have it all cut, you literally never have to go back to anything else or buy any of it ever again. That's why most of our customers are actually working on what we call our Cutco kitchen package. So because this is the ideal Cutco experience and once you have all of this, you literally will never have to buy any kitchen stuff ever again for the rest of your life. You can clear out the cupboards, the drawers, the countertops and everything and just always have confidence that no matter where you move or if you remodel or whatever, you'll always have the best of the best for generations. Say that to a customer and guess what they're gonna say? They might not say anything, but they'll be standing there going, huh? Oh, yeah. And you'll see their eyes brighten up. You'll see their body language open up. You'll see them lean into the booth. You'll see them start grabbing at things because you've intrigued them. You've generated interest in what you're talking about. Okay. The last thing I want to talk about before we wrap this up, because we only got a couple minutes left is price positioning. Price positioning is everything. So when you're at shows, price position with the kitchen instead of competitors. You've heard a lot of people say this before. I think Curtis was the first person who said this because I was like, hey dude, you're not, you're not showing competitive pricing anymore. What's going on? He's like, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't price compare Cutco against our competitors because like, you know, when you buy a Ferrari or a BMW or any other luxury car, they don't tell you how much the Mercedes is and how their prices compare. They just tell you how much their cars are. Take it or leave it, right? So um, and I didn't really kind of understand how to do that really well until literally in the last like year and a half here. And, you know, this last fall, once I kind of dialed this in, I was like, oh my gosh, now I get it, right? Cutco isn't any different. We're a luxury brand, but they do need to know why buying here at the event is the best place to buy. So this is how it sounds when you're ready to present the pricing of Cutco before you go into closing. So for me, it's always about price vision. Zig Ziglar talks about don't show your prices until you've shown the value of what you're offering, right? And that's what the whole like first five minutes is about. The leather cutting demo, the forever guarantee, the double D-edge explanation, all the third-party stories, all that stuff is all about building value, making Cutco feel super expensive, and then price positioning, introducing pricing to the people. So um, this is also where I use the Apple comparison that you heard Bert talk about yesterday. I first heard this from Justin Ford last year, and it's made a big difference in the connection that people make to our product being just like any other high quality 
um, you know, premium price products that they're very likely to either own themselves or at least know about, right? So after I show the leather demo, do the double D edge and review the guarantee, plus use the third party stories like Bert talked about to showcase our guarantee being real and true, not just feel good, too good to be true. It's time to shift back up from knives and into the 30,000 foot view of the kitchen. So that's where I say this. And don't worry, we'll make sure you get this as a script, okay? But I'm gonna roll through it, roll play it through so you kind of hear how it sounds. And once you get a, you know, this kind of email to you, it's just a paragraph, you can go back and listen to this and compare and kind of, you know, get a feel for the tone, you know, like Brandon talked about yesterday. It's not just about what you say, it's about how you say what you say and why you say certain things and when you say those things. All these things are key, right? So, you know, hey, Mrs. Jones, just so you know, we're not a cheap product. We're actually a very high-end product, but you get what you pay for, right? They're always like, yeah, power pause for the head nod, right? We're actually just like Apple in a lot of ways. And, and, you know, you know how Apple has, like, they have the iPhone and they have all the other products that go with it that sync and work with the iPhone to give you that, this whole, like, technology experience. Power pause. Customers are like, yeah, actually, I do know what you're talking about. Even if they don't have iPhones, they've been to the Apple store. They know people have Apples. They know what you're talking about, right? Okay, well, we do the same thing. We just do it for the kitchen. So we have the knives that we're famous for, and then we have the cookware, we have the flatware, and we have all the accessories and gadgets. And what's great is they all are designed to work seamlessly together to create a world-class kitchen experience for you. You just never have to upgrade any of it again once you have it. So would you like me to show you how much Cutco costs? And then you just transition into pricing, right? So, and that's literally it. And so then when I go through pricing, I say, you, know, you have to make it make sense why now is the time for them to shop here at the show. And so I love to use the position on the kitchen as the reason to kind of illustrate the reason for the customer they want to buy here at the show. So I say, and here, here's the deal. Here's our Cutco kitchen, right? So this is everything. So if you were looking to like just one and done, if, you, if you're the kind of person who likes the best of the best, one and done, you just want to, you know, get the best savings, you know, just do it all at once and, and never have to buy kitchen stuff again. If, if you like that idea, let me know because we can talk about this for you because um, there's some extra special things I'm doing just for my clients here. But basically, like when you do the full complete kitchen, you'll notice it's actually almost blank worth of stuff. And I'm literally showing them the, the brochure right? And I'm watching their nonverbals. How are they reacting to this? Some people lean in. Some people are like, hmm, okay, yeah, yeah, you know, you know, some people are like, holy crap, right? Everybody's different. So you got to watch, you got to pay attention, you got to feel people out. I go, but the reason that actually, um, because this is the largest blank or the, you know, the busiest home and garden show, the longest, the smallest, whatever, you just have to have a reason because this is the blank event. And then you tell them the type of event. So, you know, home and garden show, state fair, festival that we work in the area, like whatever in blank. So it's, it sounds like, and since this is the blank, type of blank in blank, right? So since this is the busiest home and garden show that we do in Tulsa every year, since this is the largest state fair in the Western United States that we do every year, since this is actually the smallest festival that we do in this area every year, we always bring our best package pricing to the event. In fact, that's why we have clients who wait all year just to come shop with us at this event. You can see here, like when you get the complete Cutco Kitchen, it's actually almost blank worth of stuff, worth of product. But when you get it here at the show, it's actually only blank, which saves you over blank. And so right now at today's price, it's like, hey, this is almost $13,000 worth of stuff. You'll see here, it's only 10,588, which means you save over $2,200. It's pretty amazing, right? So, and then you never have to buy knives, cookware, flatware, or accessories ever again. I'm happy to show you what I'm personally doing just for my clients who get it here at the show to make it worth your while. What do you think? Is the kitchen an option for you today? So that's literally it. Showing kitchens helps us sell bigger, more bigger orders. And what do I mean by that? It's simple. When, when like they, it helps us sell more smaller orders more often, bigger, smaller orders more often. So when the first thing I show is a $3,000 knife set, what do they think about the price? It feels expensive, right? But when I started a $13,000 package first, then how does that $3,000 knife set feel? Exactly, right? So a 3K order for us is still a great order, even though it's not 13K. 
And what's cool is when you get the ultimate set bundled with an accessory package or the upgrade bundled with a cooker set or the signature, whatever, whatever combination of things you can get, since I developed the dif discipline of and commitment of showing every package in the kitchen to every client every time, I found that not only do I sell more kitchens, but I also sell more 4K, 5K, 6K, 7K, and 8K orders as well because the client might just say, hey, I don't need flatware, but I can get the rest without that, right? And it's like, boom. So guys, there's a tremendous amount of resources out there. Go use them. All that matters is you build your confidence and you build your comfortability with presenting the kitchen consistently price positioning it really intelligently so that it doesn't feel like a big deal to your clients and then giving them great incentives to go ahead and get it all while they're here today. Or worst case scenario, make a plan for how they're going to get it over time. Do these things, you'll sell more kitchens. Hope you guys had some fun here. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Josh. That was awesome. Powerful, great information, great delivery. You rocked it. Okay.